coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. Ghost Squadron Formation Diamond Experiences Air Show Midair. Air Force Retiring Damaged B-2. Sierra Space Repositions Dream Chaser for First Mission. Welcome to Airborne Unlimited. I'm your host, Holland Lee. Let's get into today's stories. Ghost Squadron Formation Diamond Experiences Air Show Midair. Two aircraft performing at the Fort Lauderdale Air Show clipped wings during a routine last Sunday, spooking onlookers. The aircraft were performing as part of the Polaris Ghost Squadron, a team of urban camo mill surplus jets hailing from across Eastern Europe. The Polaris Ghost Squadron features an eye-catching MiG-29, a trio of Alpha Jets, and a quartet of Albatross L-39s, all working together to, quote, demonstrate precision formation flying with the aim to inspire the next generation of aerospace enthusiasts, end quote, while earning money for St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. In their recent incident, the L-39 part of the team, in a tight diamond formation, pulled just a little too close, touching tips but preventing any worse damage from occurring. Still, it was enough to make some headlines around the country, thanks to the public's ever-present interest in aircraft accidents. Thanks to the large number of attendees at the airshow, there was plenty of after-action footage to check out after the fact. In the footage, one aircraft's right wing appears to gently connect with the left horizontal stabilizer of an aircraft leading, which breaks off to the left and disengages immediately, and at least one tip tank is visibly askew. All things considered, it's a good ending to what could have easily been an utter tragedy. After the break, new flight school security regulations released. I'm currently using the Hartzell Talon, by far the best aerobatic propeller ever come out. I use the Trailblazer. It adds performance to the Super Decathlon and dependability, and it's rugged. Hartzell's been an excellent partner for Whip Air, just in terms of your product support, as well as keeping an eye on the market and developing new products that meet demand. It's helping us all have better performing airplanes. It's such a proud honor to fly behind that propeller. Welcome back. Now let's take a trip around the patch for some shorter stories. New flight school security regulations released. Recently, the TSA published updated regulations for the flight training industry, effective this July. The flight training security program, initially called the Alien Flight Student Program, was implemented by the TSA via an interim final rule in 2004. Since that time, flight schools and flight instructors have been required to implement security awareness training, and non-U.S. citizens seeking flight instruction have been required to obtain special vetting and approval prior to initiating training. Gulfstream G600 earns FAA Steep Approach Certificate Gulfstream has announced that the G600 has been certified for steep approaches to landing by the FAA, opening access to more airports around the world. The G600 has successfully demonstrated its steep approach capabilities with low-speed handlings and short-field landings at London City Airport in England and Lugano Airport in Switzerland. These challenging airports require steep approach operations as London City has a short runway and Lugano is located in the mouth of a valley. Honduran aid hits 6 million pounds via USAF airlifts. 
The U.S. Air Force unloaded 12 pallets of humanitarian cargo at a Honduran air base this month under the long-running Denton Program, a DoD transportation effort. The program serves a number of functions, often fulfilling humanitarian goals for hotspots around the world, using space available on already scheduled flights. It's a pretty efficient system overall, with little cost added to trips that are already going to be taken, delivering donated goods no less. Pratt & Whitney earned CATC for PW545D engine. Pratt & Whitney Canada's PW545D engine is one step closer to entry into service with type certification granted May 9th by Transport Canada Civil Aviation. In May 2023, Textron Aviation announced its new Cessna Citation Ascend business jet would be powered by twin PW545D engines. The new engine incorporates an advanced mixer and efficiency improvements in the compressor and turbine sections, thereby lowering fuel burn and reducing operating temperatures. The new engine is also equipped with full authority digital engine control technology, which is included with many PW500 models. That's it for today's trip around the patch. Let's get back to the rest of the news. Air Force retires damaged B-2. The U.S. Air Force won't be bringing back a damaged B-2A Spirit bomber, further whittling away at the irreplaceable fleet of strategic aircraft. The plane in question was contrasted against one that had a minor crash in 2010. That aircraft was shipped back to Northrop Grumman for repair, ultimately rejoining the fleet to a tune of about $100 million and four years of labor. The latest incident won't see the same amount of TLC, however, as a recent force structure report showed that the B-2 fleet would head into 2025 one plane short. The B-2's successor has been unveiled, and the fleet is slated to retire by 2030. Back in 2010, the force couldn't stand to lose such a strategic asset since it would be decades before it was able to be replaced with a new production unit. B-2 fleet maintenance overall is expected to run USAF bean counters about $250 million, which would include depot maintenance, sustainment, and procurement to keep them flying. That understandably renders the roughly inflation-adjust $144 million price tag to repair a single aircraft a much harder pill to swallow. Despite the B-2's limited production run, only 21 units in all, it's been able to keep up with its missions for years. Now, the B-21 Raider has entered its low-rate initial production phase, paving the way for the next-gen strategic bomber. After these messages, Sierra Space repositions Dream Chaser for first mission. Well, hello, fellow pilot. I'm John King. And I'm Martha King. You know, we've all had our flying lives disrupted lately. Well, King Schools is here to help you stay up to date with courses that you can access on your desktop, iPad, or iPhone. If you'd like a refresher or just want to expand your aviation horizons, we have a course for you. So head over to kingschools.com slant rusty today for details. For over 30 years, the Massive Sport Plane Resource Guide has provided expert, credible information, evaluations, and critical analysis of all that the sport aviation world has to offer. The all-new Digital Sport Plane Resource Guide is coming with extensive multimedia features that are constantly updated, an even more comprehensive online guide to all things sport aviation. Available soon. www.sportplane.com Welcome back. Sierra Space repositions Dream Chaser for first mission. Sierra Space's Dream Chaser has been put through the ringer at NASA's Glenn Armstrong Test Facility in Ohio, but with testing passed, it will soon head down to its launch site in Florida. The Dream Chaser has been put through just about everything NASA can test, checking out its survivability and robustness to ensure it's ready for duty in space. A five-week campaign of shock testing helped ensure the Dream Chaser and its connected cargo module, the Shooting Star, could remain connected even in the worst conditions. NASA hooked the ensemble up to the Vulcan Centaur thruster that will power them into orbit, redoing the same test again. The rest of the test saw them check on each unit with a series of disconnections, simulating how they will handle as the mission progresses. Once shock testing was finished up, they sent it all in for vacuum and temperature cycling to check for malformations, leaks, and breaks. 
Apparently, Sierra Space has been given a clean bill of health for their pet project, with the first unit of the Dream Chaser family, Tenacity, now bound for NASA's Kennedy Space Center for some last-minute checks and tests before being hooked up for launch. And that's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne, and don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.